And despite all the good efforts of people coming forth to some of the ministers that the attorney mentioned, like Audley Shaw and, and the rest, we might get left behind in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. But not due to the efforts of IV, because IV is working hard through Reggae Roots Fest to push our agenda up front. So if you didn't go to Roots Fest last year, you missed out on a big business opportunity for Jamaica and for yourself, if you're interested. If you didn't go to Roots Fest last year, you also missed out on a nice entertainment experience as well. But let me jump and tell you about the medical experience. There were three seminars at Roots Fest last year on medical aspects, medical properties. Uh, there were some doctors that spoke, not just myself. I spoke about autism. Does ever, anybody know what autism is? Well, autism is one of those diseases very well controlled by a combination of THC and CBD and other cannabinoids. But in Jamaica, we have research going on. You heard about Dr. Henry Lowe. There's also Dr. Dingle Spence. Anybody heard of Hope Institute um, up near Garden Town? Yeah, yeah. Shout it out if you heard of it. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's a cancer hospital, right? Well, almost 15 to 20 different cancers are so well controlled by cannabis, it's amazing. We, we did work through Apollo Medical and Pure Jamaica Island Traders in Mobe and Negril about two years ago, working on ovarian cancers, um, hepatic or what we call liver cancers, showing great reduction, doing PET scans, CT scans afterwards, it was amazing. So we want to be able to get the chance to expand this research uh, using patients in Jamaica, patients from outside Jamaica, using cannabis freely and legally and medically because that is the opportunity that is now presenting to us. As uh, was mentioned earlier, after approximately two and a half years of wait and struggle with the Cannabis Licensing Authority, otherwise called the CLA, we finally got our therapeutic retail license in Kingston so we can start treating patients in Kingston. Um, you know, come check us out if you're passing through or if you have family who want to be treated. They can now come to the office. They can see the doctor. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Garvey, Dr. Julius Garvey. Uh, anybody heard of Dr. Julius Garvey? Yes, yes. Okay, you might have heard of him. Um, so he's a retired cardiothoracic vascular surgeon, but he's now a cannabis medicine physician. And he's also treating patients. I'm treating patients. We're seeing patients there. We're analyzing them. Some patients can take low-dose cannabis. Some patients need high dose. So high a dose sometimes that they actually have to stay in a hospital setting, you know, receiving you know, upwards of 500, 600 milligrams a day of THC. That kind of puts you out. You can't walk. So you have to have a nurse administering the cannabis to you. But you're doing that in a program your cancers can show some dramatic improvement and some other diseases. Of course, there's outpatient treatment with cannabis too. Here in Florida, um, my colleague, uh, Dr. McKenzie, wait, wave your hand there, Mike, where are you? Uh, I don't see him, but he was here. Uh, he's also one of the first few physicians in Florida who's been using medical cannabis on children and adults for you know about four years. We, most of our patients, we have to treat on an outpatient basis because the hospitals here in Florida won't allow us to admit a patient and give them cannabis while they're inpatient. That might change soon, but for now, we treat the patients outpatient. And we're working with a, you know approximately 100 different diseases and disorders. I'm using the office in Lauderhill. Mike is on Sheridan. So it's something for you to consider uh, depending on whatever diagnosis you may have, see a physician. Check out somebody who is certified. In Florida, since we're in Florida, let's talk about Florida a little bit. Florida, as you, as you heard, passed a law uh, twice with amendments of the people. It has not been fully implemented by the current governor, but the next governor, Gillum, promises to legalize cannabis. Early voting has started. 
and he will not be governor if you don't go and vote for him. That's my plug. Okay, back to business. Um, it's not been fully implemented, but many steps have been uh, approved. So therefore, you can see a physician, there are approximately 1,300 physicians in the state of Florida who are certified to prescribe and recommend medical cannabis. You have to see the doctor, get evaluated. The doctor places you in the registry of the state, the Office of Medical Marijuana Use, which is in the Department of Health in Tallahassee. You have to pay $75 to register and get a cannabis card. As soon as you get your electronic registration, you notify the doctor again, and the doctor's office can place an order for your cannabis in the computer. Then you can go to a dispensary. There are 15 or 16 companies that are authorized in the state of Florida to dispense cannabis. They have about 60 different shops all across the state finally opening in Broward County last month. Broward County was the last county in Florida to get a dispensary. And that's because of the politics. So what did I say? November 6th, go vote, vote early now, change things. So after you get your card and your number, you can, your doctor will place an order for you. You can then go to the dispensary or you can order online or by phone, and then you can get your cannabis. Then following your doctor's orders and your recommendations, they tell you how many milligrams you use a day or per hour or how many times a day you can use it for your medication use. And you can find it will help multiple things. Earlier was mentioned the opiate crisis, right? Anybody ever heard of the opiate crisis? Yeah. So yes, it's killing a lot of people. It's killing a lot of people right here in this neighborhood. So in Broward, is about a 1,000 people a year die, or more, maybe much more, because we just don't actually know the correct numbers of who's dying, why they're dying, and what's the implication of the opiates that they use. So I can successfully take somebody off opiates onto cannabis, usually in about a month or two. And so can, you know, Dr. McKenzie can do the same, I'm sure. And so can almost any other cannabis licensed physician do the same. But why can't we do it very easily? Well, because the pharmaceutical companies that push the opiates, they have way more money right now than the cannabis industry and they're pushing their agenda. But if you have family or friends who are addicted to opiates, try and get them in. You know, have them see a doctor who's licensed in cannabis therapy and who believes in it and see if you can help them out. It's something to consider.